the bombing. I'd be about 24. There were some of them quite, you know, be a year or two younger than me, actually. Somebody had said before the, before the war broke out, somebody had said you'd be doing that sort of thing. He would have said, no, I couldn't do that. But he did it. My position in the aircraft was bomb aimer and front gunner. This was the, from here, was the bomb aimer's compartment. And you, you were laid down to look through this uh, with the bomb site in front of you. Uh, in the case of attack, you could stand up and stand up straight into the turret. Standing up was better than, because when you got down in the nose, you were laid down all the time. Coming up to the target, the target would be illuminated with flares, several different sorts of flares. It was the finest firework display you could ever wish to see. It was, it was a magnificent sight, really, if, if it wasn't so awesome. And then, coming up to the target, of course, you've got the searchlights. A funny thing to say, but if, if you were up in the nose and the searchlight happened to catch you, you drew back into the aircraft, no, oh, they can see me. You looked at the target and you thought, all the searchlights, all this flak and everything, you wonder how on earth you're going to get through all that lot. All you concentrated on was you had an aiming point and you wanted to get the bomb on that, as near to that aiming point as you could. So you concentrated on the bombing. I never thought about the damage that was being done. And then before you knew it, you were through the other side, and oh, we're through, we've got it. And then away off you went, returned home then. I didn't think it was having any effect, but I was told afterwards by people at home that could see what, when, when I used to go home, there was a, a bit of a difference, it's, you know, I, I was a bit um, different, if you like. I can't exactly say what it was. Personally, I didn't think it affected me at all. I took it as it came. If you start dwelling on the fact that you were going to you know, possibly die, it could affect your efficiency on the job, for one thing. Another thing, it could affect you mentally. The target was Frankfurt on Main. So we set off about four o'clock in the afternoon. As we were approaching the target, um, all of a sudden we were being attacked. So I went up here, up to the nose, to man the guns in case I saw the, the attacker. And in the attack, he set one of the engines on fire and also set the bomb bays on fire managed to put the, uh, the uh, flames out on the, on the engine, but just and then he came round again, set another engine on fire, and there were two engines then on fire. As he attacked for the third time, the pilot gave the order to abandon. So I dropped down out of the front turret into the bomb members' compartment. They, they had a, a code word on this aircraft. If, if it was abandoned aircraft, he, the pilot just shot abracadabra. And that was all it was, abracadabra, abracadabra. And I heard the navigator say, oh, just a minute, Heck. This was the pilot, was a chap called Heckendorf. Just a minute, Heck. And, and then, as he said that, the aircraft blew up. and the explosion detached this front part, the bomb ends compartment, completely away from the aircraft. I was unconscious for a short while, it couldn't have been for very long. And when I came to, I realized that the, I was trapped up in the nose of the aircraft and nothing else, just the nose. So 
I tried to free myself and I couldn't get free. And so I pulled the ripcord on the parachute and that pulled me out of the aircraft.